Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Warcraft replay. Here we have a human mirror on the map Terran Stands once again. Um, yeah, we have Shamiko spawning in as the red human on the bottom right. He will be facing off against Yumiko, uh, the plume human player on the top left. Kind of funny how both players' names end with Miko, and one's Korean, one's Chinese, but me personally, I only know the definition of the Japanese word Miko. Um, Ready to work. Yeah, uh, I chose this game probably because I guess Jamiko hasn't faced Yumiko on the channel before, so hey, why not? Yeah, Yumiko hasn't Ready to work. played all too much uh, the past couple of years. Uh, he has. I've seen a couple of his games recently though, so. Might cast another one of his next time. Um, I think I saw him burst Ready WF Sid, and he did a pally start on that one, so kind of curious done. to see how that one turns out. Uh, I might cast it relatively sooner than normal since uh, it's only like 15 minutes. But done. anyway, uh, both players go for Mountain King start here. Uh, another reason why I chose this particular game. Uh, humans have been rather uh, been rather inconsistent with their first hero picks, to be honest. Uh, Mountain King obviously getting a resurgence despite that like one second thunderclap nerf. And uh, yeah, Archmage is still sometimes picked. And like I said before, um, that one game where we had a pally start. So lots of. Lots of variations human has um, these recent Ready days. Might be just because like Blizzard Warwick has refused to give them any bit of love. Um, but yeah, we are gonna have some militia creeping at the uh, Merc camp here right after this footman goes down. Uh, there we go, 40 XP for the Mountain King. Shamiko not so uh, not so brazen with his own footman here. Uh, both Mountain Kings do have Storm Bolts, and uh, never mind. It seems like Shamiko is just going to completely make my words invalid as the Shadow Priest is going to pick up uh, the kill there. I actually have no idea if he uh, if he got the experience or not. I think he did. Um, it's just because I'm watching from Jamieko's perspective, I just can't see his XP gain. But, uh, yep, both Mountain Kings starting at exact same uh, experience. The items, however, pretty decent for, um, actually no, they look completely the same, except for the consumable. Uh, one of Mana Stealing versus Greater Healing Potion, both Mountain Kings got plus 6 agility in terms of those two slippers there. Um, obviously the Great Healing Potion is more impact, but the Mountain King is one of those heroes that could potentially use the one of mana stealing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure uh, I would say Yumiko still won out in terms of just better items. Uh, but anyway, both sides once again going for the exact same camps here at their respective gold mines. Um, I believe we're... Yeah, we're not going into tier 2 just yet. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to uh, to tell where this is going to go eventually, but level 3 on the Mana King on both sides here. Um, Shemiko is still, st still waiting on putting those points into any of those abilities. Surprisingly, Yumiko! Um, Already put his points in, and it's a level 2 Stormbolt and plus uh, level 1 Bash. Uh, Bash is an interesting one. Uh, we haven't seen it all too often recently because of how, just how high impact uh, Thunderclap has been in terms of just raw damage. But, uh, yeah, uh, Bash is picked up. All the items being sold here for the Mountain King except for the Greater Healing Potion, picking up the Boots of Speed. Upgrade complete. Uh, Mana King on Chainmaker's side picks up the Claws and Ring of Regen, so Let the killing begin. obviously he wouldn't want to sell those items. 
uh, Storm Bolt to the face on the footman there. That is going to go down. Uh, oh, Jamiko has finally put points into the Mana King there. That is going to be level 2 Thunderclap straight up. So potential, potential uh, expansion harassment here with Thunderclap on the gold line. You'll have to be pretty quick about it because the Arcane Tower is going to try its best to burn the mana off the Mountain King. I believe the Peasants are also trying their best to spread out as well. Uh, only going to hit two of those Peasants there, but the Tower is now the next target for the Mountain King. Uh, the Tower is going to do its job though. It's going to completely wipe out the mana pool of the Mountain King of Chemiko, And this is going to probably force a TP scroll maybe. Um, he's actually moving around and possibly going for a TP staff instead. He did steal the mana off that Mountain King and he actually cancels... Uh, oh no, he he, uh, he probably got bashed and interrupted the TP channel. So that was pretty lucky on Yumiko's part. Is going to force a TP scroll in the end. Um, so yeah, Chemiko... I mean, he did delay uh, a bit of the gold mining here on the second base, uh, but he did have to burn his TP scroll and a huge amount of uh, health and mana, so yeah, I'm not too sure about that one on Chemiko's side. He also lost his um, one of mana stealing, even though he didn't actually uh, steal Stop enough done. mana for a another thunderclap, so Ready to work. a bit unlucky on on Chemiko's side there. Uh, he also is not using a clarity or a regen, which uh, Yumiko is, so that kind of tells me that Chemiko is also lacking an arcane vault. Uh, there we go, it is about to be completed, but yeah, definitely would have liked to have that finished a little earlier. Um, he probably <clears throat> either relied on his ring of region or he was probably too uh, busy trying to control his units over at the enemy base. Uh, but it seems like Yumiko is going to cl claim the uh, double items here in the middle. He's going to pick up another close of attack. And uh, he should probably go for the second one just in case Chemiko comes in once again. But no, Chemiko's just going to go back to the Goblin Lab and uh, try and finish it off since he did get interrupted before. <clears throat> Yumiko is going to stop his uh, attempt here as the Zeppelin getting picked up as well as the Shredder for Yumiko and he is going to try his best to keep that Shredder alive. Um, yeah, full HP Mountain King kind of forcing the low HP Mountain King to uh, run away. Stormbolt and Mud Golem is going to go down, maybe the Shadow Priest is going to get denied, but at the end of the day, that's like three mercenaries that were recently picked up, which has to um, end up getting killed off, so Yumiko playing this very well. Um, yeah, I'm very impressed with Yumiko actually. I honestly thought because Chemiko has been playing a lot more compared to his opponent that uh, it would... Um, look a lot more one-sided, but it seems like it's kind of lopsided towards Yumiko, to be honest. Uh, either way, tier 2 has done for probably both sides. We are going to have an Archmage second for oh, Chemiko, God. meanwhile. Uh, no second hero just yet for Yumiko. He's going to go straight into tier 3, however. So, this tells me that uh, he's not going to go double Arcane Sanctum, which uh, Chemiko is going to go. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too, too keen on this. He did see bash proc being used, so, or he did see bash being procced, so, uh, I mean, he has the green knight to go tier 3 units. He isn't exactly in, in like, need of uh, spellbreakers. So, yeah, interesting decision, Chemiko. Job's done. Because I'm assuming he's building dark double sanctums for the eventual um, spellbreakers to counteract the thunderclaps from the mana king, but the thing is, Yumiko's mana king is not going thunderclap. Here comes the blizzard here. Um, maybe maybe Yumiko well wants to consider going spellbreakers, uh, but nah, not this time. He's gonna go into 
griffins and potentially maybe even workshop units here as the blood mage coming out second here. Uh, so this looks like classic uh, full mountain king support with probably a paladin to finish it off. Uh, double barracks also seems to indicate we are, might be seeing some knights as well. So griffin knights seem to be seem to be the composition of choice for Yumiko, which is it sure is greedy. Um, it sure is high high maintenance, but. Uh, yeah, uh, he does have a second base at least, which Jamiko does as well, but uh, he's choosing the more safe option with the casters and uh, spellbreaker I imagine. Uh, flying machine, water teams being added here. I think this flying machine is just for scouting purposes because, uh, yeah, he hasn't scouted very, very much this game. He hasn't actually had the opportunity to hire a Zeppelin commit to his opponent. Forces are under attack. Um, plus six claws given over to the Blood Mage as well as Devotion Aura there. Uh, Rogue Magi's still being kept on the Mountain King. I believe he just wants it more compared to the Blood Mage. Uh, oh, here comes a potential fight here. Stormbolt to the face onto the Mountain King of Yumiko. As, uh, yep, Yumiko's Mountain King gonna return the favor. Uh, that is a lot of farms from Jamiko. Uh, but yeah, first bit of spellbreakers are being added to the army comp. Mortar team also here as well, but I believe the mortar team is going to find themselves kind of useless when the knights uh, roll in because... Yeah, it's kind of hit, hard to hit those knights with just mortar teams here. I mean, obviously the mortar teams make a lot more sense for Yumiko since... Uh, I smell magic in the air. The spellcasters are prime targets for them, but uh, yeah, I believe the flying machine did go around and scout, and curious to see if uh, Jamiko is going to try and adapt. But it seems like he's just going to double down with the more teams and spellbreakers here. I'm a little worried because I'm pretty sure knights just outclass spellbreakers and. Almost every category aside from utility, I guess. Uh, frag shards being upgraded for the mortal teams, and we're still double pumping out knights, which is kind of crazy to think about. We even have an arcane sanctum just for those priests. Um, not sure if we're going to go full into masses training, but priests just to keep up with the health bars of those knights there. Uh, I'm not sure if the Griffin Aviary was actually used at all. I think it might have been a dead building. Job done. But regardless, I think I think Griffin still could be used since there's not much uh, anti-air on the side of Shaymiko aside from these priests and the Archmage. But yeah, because that is a lot of mortar teams already. Three mortar teams. Uh, six spellbreakers, I believe. Eight spellbreakers now. Wow, that is a lot of units here on Chainmaker's side. Eight is supply for both players. We do have a surround on the Mana King, but he is going to be forced to use an invuln. Uh, those mortar teams, their first volleys seem to be hitting their targets pretty well. It's just that the knights are so fast that they can get right up to the Mana King's face. But the Thunderclap is going to come in and apply that slow debuff onto the knights there. Hopefully making it a lot easier for those mortar teams to hit their targets. Uh, Sentry Ward is going to be spotted, I believe, because of that flying machine. But uh, yeah, it's uh, Spellbreakers Knights versus each other, and the mortar teams just trying their best to hopefully hope that their uh, frontline will live to see the... Uh, will hopefully uh, keep them protected. We even have sorceresses being added to the mix here to add additional slows, permanent slows, or very long slows to those knights. And to my surprise, uh, yeah, these knights are not actually performing all too well. Um, this knight might even go down. Uh, nope, he is going to get saved with that TP. Expansion attempt on the top right is going to get cancelled, and... Yeah, surprisingly, Chamiko took this uh, very well. He didn't actually lose that many units, I don't think. Um, 
that's really surprising. Both sides were pretty much even on supply, which I guess, um, if they're even on supply, uh, that obviously means a lot more units on Shamiko's side, since his units would probably consist more of low, low cost units. Um, I don't exactly remember what knights cost. I think they cost four food compared to spellbreakers. I'm going to say two, but I think it's three. Um, but yeah, the spellcasters definitely cost two. So like, it's kind of like dots versus um, dryads and druids of claws. Dots basically cost two. Meanwhile, dryads and bears either cost three or four. So like. Yeah, low cost units tend to be massed with a lot more numbers, which, like, duh, that's just math. Um, scout machine, uh, not gonna find too much, aside from just the same thing. I guess he is gonna spot this tier 3 transition, which, um, not sure what this will end up being. It could just be that knights are getting matched up, but obviously the Spybrokers have been working out pretty well for um, Jamiko, so... Not entirely sure what this tier 3 would mean, aside from like uh, a third hero, maybe. You could also go uh, frag, frag shard, since I'm pretty sure that's a tier 3 upgrade. Uh, I guess masses training would be a thing. So, masses training for the priests on the way, and maybe even sorceresses might be useful, since Bonimorph oh, is a pretty powerful ability. Um, it's just that there's. There, do seem to be a couple of priests on Yumiko's side, so yeah, I'm not too sure on that. Frag Shards is on the way, but here comes the knights here, along with the mortal teams. This is going to make quick work of the workshop. Uh, Chemiko is going to come in, but probably not in time, as Yumiko has shown uh, level 3 Thunderclap and level 2 Stormbolt, so he actually went to retrain his own Mana King there. Um, not gonna affect the spellbreakers, obviously. He's trying his best to get in the range of those spellcasters, but uh, I think he's trying a little too hard here. Scroll of Healing is gonna get used, but with that invul down, he is gonna take a lot of feedback damage from the spellbreakers. Already down to half HP there. Only going for uh, one, two th uh, thunderclaps. Is gonna take down a couple priests and uh, mortar team. But he pretty much expand all his mana, and that is going to be a TP scroll from the mana king there. Just to get out of dodge. He did take a couple of units, but... Uh, he did use invulns, he did use TP scrolls. Um, he used a lot of items. Uh, that's probably just the concise way to say it. Pally coming out as the third hero here. The workshop actually survived with 13 HP, which is kind of nice. That does mean that the mortal teams have frag shards. Um, it's I come to cleanse the just that. Um, yeah, it's honestly, um, Tameko's army comp is so diverse. I wouldn't even be surprised if he actually went up to. Uh, high upkeep, since it, uh, I don't know if I should call it that, He's um, his army comp seems a little spread out, he does have a decent number of pretty much all those units there, so um, yeah, probably high upkeep is just icing on the cake, I guess. Uh, Pally comes out, he is level 1 unfortunately, so he's going to be very very squishy, level 2 Pally on Yumiko's side there. Thunderclap trying to slow these knights for the Blizzard and potential mortar teams to try and do their best, but knights are still pretty quick. Um, they, uh, yeah, Chemiko is going to be forced to, or at least resort to using slows from those sorceresses to keep these knights in check. Here comes the Mannequin once again with the Invuln. He's going to Stormbolt the uh, Archmage there, but with the surround on the Spellbreakers, it is going to prevent him from actually f finishing off the Archmage. Once again, Lead Deep Scroll is going to come through. A lot of red bars, uh, well, I guess red bars is probably not the best description, but a lot of low hit points for uh, the majority of these units here. Half the Spellbreakers are pretty much below half, and uh, the Mountain King as well. 
Oh, here comes another fight here. Blizzard is going to stop um, the majority of that regeneration scroll from being utilized there. But the Spellbreakers haven't really had their times to uh, recoup, so a couple might go down maybe. Uh, TP scroll coming in from the Archmage. He is going to take basically all his army with him. Uh, that's surprising. I thought a couple of those units were out of the range, but... Uh, yeah, both sides not really suffering too much casualties here. Yumiko is the first one to go into low upkeep, it seems. At 90 supply, he does need one more farm if he wants to go for the full 100. But, uh, yeah, now that both players have gotten themselves a third gold mine, they should definitely uh, creep into low upkeep, uh, high upkeep. Because I feel like just one complete fight would just seal the deal in the game but for now both sides do seem to be pretty liberal with their tp scrolls um this does seem to be all or nothing here from chameko however he does not have a tp scroll in any of his heroes um yumiko at least has uh one on his mountain kings so yeah, this does seem like desperation don't, don't, move here from Shamiko. He is also about 13 supply behind his opponent. Um, I come to cleanse this land. Yeah, uh, I'm not too sure on this one. Our town is under siege. Animal war training for I th think that was Yumiko. So his knights finally about a thousand HP there. So that's always nice to see. This expansion on the bottom left is going to get taken down, but the top right. Also going to get answered. Um, yeah, this might hurt Yumiko a little bit more because he is the one suffering from high upkeep tax, but uh, both sides just going to extend their siege to the uh, to the first expansion. Uh, militia being brought over here, but I'm not too sure why. Probably just to cull their supply. Uh, TP scroll from Yumiko is going to try and answer this attack. That is a lot of damage coming in from more teams there. And Priest is going to insta-die insta from that. Six mortar teams forcing out uh, forcing out Chain Miko from his home. Is that six? That is seven, actually. So, uh, those mortar teams... Yeah, they're doing a lot, in fact. Uh, it does make sense, obviously, since slower units with the Spellbreakers and... Um, Shamiko going a lot more heavy into the casters, so the yeah, the war team's just proving a lot more worth for Yumiko's side compared to Shamiko. Plus one attack upgrade versus uh, plus two, so Shamiko's still investing a little bit more in terms of just improving the quality of his units. Plus two, plus two versus uh, plus one, plus one. So Yumiko a little slacking a little bit in terms of upgrades. But here we go. There you can see the frag shards doing so much work against those. Uh, spellbreakers. Here comes the blizzard trying to keep these uh, knights low HP as more spellbreakers are going down to those frag shards. Another thunderclap coming in from the mana king there. He is going to drink out mana pot however, but he is... Oh, there we go with the uh, thunderclap. That is going to go to five over to the mana king of Shemiko. The knights still trying to push it, uh, uh, but the mortar teams are kind of lowering their numbers, which is kind of bad for Yumiko, he kind of relies on his mortar teams, but the pally goes down for Chemiko. Griffin is going to get netted there as uh, I think Chemiko lost. Yikes. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that was a Yumiko victory. Um, hopefully you guys have seen the who, who had the victorious message, I didn't, um, but uh, yeah, I'm fairly certain that Yumiko took that one because, uh, I mean, he was the one aggressing and he did take down the Archmage. Mountain King was still pretty high HP, and uh, yeah, Chamiko kind of ran out of gas with his own Mountain King, so yeah, um, I was thinking that the Mortar Teams going down might have been Yumiko's doom, but uh, I guess it was too little too late, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, I will probably cast Yumiko vs WFZ, where he started Paladin first, so yeah, take care.
and I'll see you guys in next time.